Um, good evening. Um, welcome to our visioning uh, session for the Northeast Shore of Staten Island. Uh, my name is Karen Imus and I'm the Vice President of Programs at Waterfront Alliance. I'm really pleased to see uh, so many uh, great advocates, stakeholders, um, local residents, and just waterfront enthusiasts with us this evening. Um, greatly appreciate you taking the time and, and bearing with us with uh, the, this new norm of Zoom technology. Um, so we'll just walk you through a little bit of an introduction uh, about why we're all here this evening and a little bit of, about Waterfront Alliance for those of you uh, who don't know us. Um, this evening, we're going to be um, doing a bit of a visioning workshop around a stretch of the Northeast shore of Staten Island and looking at uh, maritime activation, public access and climate resilience. Um, uh, a little bit about who we are at Waterfront Alliance. Um, we are New York and New Jersey's premier advocacy organization that inspires and affects resilient, revitalized and accessible coastlines for all communities. Um, we are, uh, are active champions for all 520 miles uh, of the city and, and more broadly speaking, more than 1000 miles across the New York, New Jersey metro region. Uh, and we do our, our uh, work in a number of different ways. Uh, some of you are familiar uh, with our uh, extensive outreach and advocacy. It sort of takes shape in four areas, um, one being coastal resilience, championing um, uh, green and gray infrastructure projects and strategies for um, protecting our shorelines. Uh, the second being uh, open space access, uh, making sure that our uh, communities have um, uh, access to quality open space at the water's edge, that our uh, vulnerable underserved communities have quality open space and that we're continuing to find uh, new ways uh, to create opportunities to get uh, uh, to and into the water. Um, our third area includes the working waterfront, our, our maritime sector, ensuring its economic viability, its future growth, and its sustainability. Um, and our fourth area includes uh, uh, education around climate and the water's edge. Uh, and you, you see a nice picture here of some youth fishing uh, in Staten Island, and we uh, take great pride in, in a lot of our um, uh, activities and efforts that bring young people uh, to the water's edge. Um, so a little bit more about kind of our role in uh, workshops uh, and the technical tools that we use at Waterfront Alliance to help bring many uh, projects to life. Um, uh, myself and several of my colleagues on, on this uh, uh, meeting, uh, especially Maggie Flanagan, uh, our Director of Education Outreach, who many of you know, have been uh, active leaders in um, creating something called the Maritime Activation Plan. Uh, we've done a visioning for um, how to uh, create community informed, impactful and implementable waterfront improvements for Governor's Island and for Brooklyn Bridge Park. Um, this has actually led to some actionable um, investments in and, and infrastructure projects around ferry and pier improvements, uh, beaches and get downs, marinas, um, and, and something that we uh, continue to look at across different uh, stretches of waterfront in the region. We also have a very uh, exciting tool called the Waterfront Edge Design Guidelines, uh, which is spearheaded by my colleague Sarah Doherty uh, with us tonight. And this is a rating system, um, a verification system for waterfront projects to meet uh, criteria and a set of guidelines to create resilient, ecological, and accessible waterfronts. Sort of think of LEED for green buildings, Wedge is a similar type of rating system for waterfront projects. And we actually have verified about 10 projects across New York City, um, at, including the Sandy Hook Pilots um, facility, which is uh, in this study stretch. Um, so how did we get here today? Um, we uh, kind of uh, took the maritime activation plan lens and our wedge lens, um, put them together uh, and uh, sought out um, a couple of different uh, stretches of waterfront uh, across New York that would benefit from a, uh, a perspective through this lens. And uh, here you can see um, the stretch that we'll be talking about today. Uh, this effort is being supported by a grant from New York State, from the Regional Economic Development Council to look at this really extraordinary uh, mixed use stretch of waterfront from Clifton Station down to Fort Wadsworth, look at its many different uses uh, and see what are some of the challenges and opportunities around reactivating this stretch for different uses that will really bring um, benefits to the local community, 
uh, and also draw greater uh, citywide interest in the different benefits of this stretch of waterfront. There's so much uh, change happening in Staten Island, as many of you know, in and around this geography. Um, and uh, in some respects, this particular stretch hasn't um, had that sort of lens turned to it. And so we felt it uh, was very important in the course of our work uh, to do this report, um, to have all of your input. Uh, we've been doing individual stakeholder discussions and this broader community forum today. And what we hope will come up with a set of recommendations and actions that we can then share with local lawmakers, civic groups, um, citizens, uh, to see what we can action and realize uh, in the coming years. Um, so at this juncture, um, and oh, sorry, before I turn it over, just a couple of minor housekeeping points. Um, just please uh, keep your lines on mute. There'll be opportunities to weigh in and talk and we're gonna keep this uh, fun and, and light and informal. Um, uh, but yes, please keep yourselves on mute for the time being. Feel free to post any questions, comments, ideas in the chat as we go along. Um, and I look forward to hearing the discussion this evening. And I'm gonna turn it over now to my colleague, Captain Maggie Flanagan, our Director of Education and Outreach. Oh, I think Maggie, you're on mute. There you go. Thank you all. Um, we're really excited to jump right into the conversation today. Uh, our agenda, as you can see on the screen here, uh, begins now with all, our all of us talking together as a whole group in a very brief lightning round of SWAT. You may have heard of that before. The acronym stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. So we'll be asking you all for your SWAT input about this stretch of Staten Island. After that, we'll be separated into breakout rooms uh, where we'll be able to be in small groups. So we'll be able to talk with a lot more detail than the initial lightning round. Um, and we're also very blessed in uh, one of the breakout rooms, we'll be able to work with Arts for Community Transformation from the Brooklyn Art Incubator. And they're going to be showing us afterwards what that component looked like in the breakout as well. So you'll hear more about that later. And then we'll come back together after we've kind of divided up and conquered some of our thoughts. Uh, we'll come back together as a whole group for a summary as well. Um, so I, I think right now we're really excited to get everyone's thoughts, to hear what everyone's thinking about this stretch of uh, Staten Island and its uh, SWAT, its strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Please use the raise your hand function in Zoom uh, if possible, if you scroll to the bottom of your screen in the button on the right that says reactions. There's a button in there that says raise hand, and that should hopefully let us see folks in the order that they are interested in speaking. And if you're on the phone, you can use star six to unmute yourself or mute yourself, and star nine is a raise your hand function on the phone as well. And uh, so I'm looking to see if we have any raised hands. Uh, and if not, Folks, we can also just all unmute. And uh, if there's anyone who would like to go um, and tell us what you like, what are the strengths of this section of Staten Island? Well, I think the views of Manhattan and New York. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's only accessibility. There's a, the train runs along. The, uh, there's major um, arteries, Bay Street, Front Street, um, certainly by boat. Kayak Staten Island runs tours from Front Street um, to um, Hal Austin and to the bridge. Excellent. So the accessibility, that's wonderful. And I like the way you also brought up um, accessing uh, kind of a transportation that can help you enjoy the region and also accessing the water. <laughs> well, Makerspace is there, and they, they've done a lot of community outreach, and um, they help, uh, they let Kayak Staten Island, we store our boats there until we can get a container. And just, we've been in and out, Natural Resources Protective Associations, an environmental group, we recently did a cleanup all along the Front Street area, we're looking to plant wildflowers. Wow, that, I think that's a, an additional strength uh, 
that you're revealing for us is the kind of community interest in, in revitalizing some of the spaces here. I'm very interested in, uh, in uh, seeing that be supported, definitely. Great. Uh, if oh, I could just, oh, go ahead, please. Yeah. I, I was looking down in my, uh, this is Nicholas Sveginsa from Staten Island. Uh, I'm on CB1, <laughs> Community Board 1. Uh, I was looking down at reactions. I see a thumbs up and a clap. I don't see a raise your hand to speak. Oh. Am I wrong? Um, that uh, might be in the individual versions of Zoom that wind up on folks, folks' computers, but not to worry about that because it is also fine with us if you unmute and speak up because we definitely want to hear from anyone. So if anyone's having technical difficulty, um, please feel free to just speak up uh, by unmuting yourself or also to chat. No, we'll raise the actual hand and we'll see oh. raise, we're on gallery. The raise hand is under participants. Is what? Not reactions. Ah. The raise hand is which? Under participants. If you click on participants, you'll see it as a choice in the lower right. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Well, now, anyway, to answer your question, uh, it's um, an interesting waterfront. It's, it's got everything from Staten Island, uh, maritime activities, uh, derelict sites. It's all pretty approachable. And it all has this magnificent view, which somebody just mentioned. I absolutely agree with that. Um, and it's all threatened by yuppie developments. Um, you think uh, the threat is developments? I, I personally think so, besides floods. Floods, of course, is another th threat. Okay. And, and floods. <laughs> we can move um, into uh, threats uh, as, as folks may want to comment more about what they think about um, you know, developing in Staten Island and also the effects of climate change and flooding and, and the needs for that. I see, oh, or Claudia, please feel free if you, um, whatever you would like to comment on, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to transition before you were ready. I look at it as a threat because as they were, someone was mentioning before the development and uh, the city sees dollar signs when they see our waterfront and what will be happening basically is uh, taking away that waterfront property and really making it privatized and very little of us will be able to see that beautiful view of not only Manhattan, but definitely of Brooklyn. And it would be, as they refer to it as a Shanda, for future generations. When people complained that the area yeah. needed to be cleaned up around Front Street, uh, the EDC did a cleanup and then immediately started putting in fence posts to fence people off from the water. I think a big issue has to be accessibility because there's very few spots along Staten Island's shore where you can get into the water, certainly along the North Shore. Mm -hmm. That was, I believe we heard from Jackie with you at uh, Kayak Staten Island, the fence, uh, the community responded and the fence was removed. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, it didn't even get up. They started drilling holes to put fence posts in and the local fishermen, uh, naturalists, the uh, kayak crowd, everyone rose up as one. And uh, they said, okay, okay, okay. And EDC backed off. Because it, it, it had turned into a lot, RVs, the long-term parking there, it's a lover's lane at night. There is real potential for abuse, um, but certainly we have to protect access and any development has to be thoughtful development. Mm -hmm. I see Jim, ha you have your hand up. Unmute un myself, there you go. Sure, uh, sure. Jim McFarland from Florida, so I don't have the best answer, but uh, on a positive, I see the positive 276 where you've got park, you've got trees, you've got greenery. Uh, I think that's a tremendous benefit to working from there uh, onto the Northeast. Another strength there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we haven't yet heard if folks um, have any thoughts of opportunities. Um, uh, 
I think what you were saying, Anthony, about uh, the stretch of uh, Front Street uh, is certainly an area we'd love to hear opportunities and anywhere else folks would like. Hi, this is Debbie. Um, I think an opportunity is uh, while, while you're creating this space for development, um, the ability to tell the history of the North Shore and along those lines, it, it has a, a long, deep, dark, wonderful history um, that I think that's something that we should, uh, there's an opportunity to preserve it and or highlight it in terms of, of um, how you bring, bring things to, to the forefront. That's amazing. That's amazing. Do you, um, if I may ask, um, do you have a, uh, in the stretch we're talking about now, um, in, in just like lightning style, are, do you see some particular historical opportunities that we might be able to um, give some attention to in the study? Absolutely, the Underground Railroad. That's a, a big piece of that part of, 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 of the island that, not a, that nearly, um, not anyone really knows about it, but because it's the waterways, there are slave narratives that talk about um, coming through that part of Staten Island. Um, some were successful, some weren't, but there are stories there. And, and I think that's, that's a real opportunity to tell a really interesting story. Oh, that's powerful, very powerful. Thank you. Alice Thank Olsen you. House, the National Ferry Museum. People don't realize the National uh, Lighthouse Museum is on Staten Island. Excellent, a lot of history. Um, thanks, Robert. panuzzi has been waiting uh, with your hand up. And, and if I might just say, I, I'm going to try to lower hands for Claudia and Jim since you spoke. But if you'd like to speak again, just raise again. And uh, please let us know what you think, Robert. Well, thank you for recognizing me. And um, Debbie, I love the idea. And um, welcome to all my Staten Island friends. I also wanted to say in answer to your question about opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. And um, full disclosure, I've worked with Waterfront Alliance constantly, my home borough of the Bronx. Um, we really need living shorelines and we need to pay attention to um, the impacts of hard surfaces against the water, okay? Um, and the, the DEC and um, other parts of the city have started to incorporate natural features and engineered wetlands into their waterfronts. And it would really be a shame if the North Shore didn't get any kind of natural or engineered natural feature as part of its new waterfront. Um, and we've seen it work in Roberto Clemente Park in the Bronx. Um, and I really think that's and getting the, the best landscape design for the waterfront would be crucial to protect from CSOs um, and protect water quality and invite citizens to be um, more environmentally aware of the effects of waterfront development. So I would say that incorporating natural features and living shorelines into waterfront development, really crucial and important for access. That's the most important. Yes. Thank you. Yes, no, thank you. And it's kind of a, almost a great segue into the one SWAT area we haven't discussed yet about um, threats. Since I also living shorelines, um, there are ways to use them to uh, help mitigate the threats of climate change as well, um, uh, which uh, we, I think we all realize is uh, becoming a threat everywhere. But um, please let us know what you think about threats here in this area of Staten Island as well. Hi, this is Jonathan Goldstick. I think we need to be a little careful when we talk about living shorelines mitigating the effects of climate change. We have to understand what we mean by climate change, what effects we're trying to mitigate. Natural shorelines, slopes, oyster beds and all are very good for mitigating the energy of waves. They don't do anything for future sea level rise. The sea level is gonna rise five or 10 feet. It's not gonna matter if you're, you've got a bulkhead or an oyster bed or, or that. So, um, to just be careful not to reflexively sure. think that if it's a soft shoreline, it's better for climate change. 
Sure, sure. Thank you. And my trying to summarize, you're right. I didn't reflect the details correctly. I apologize. Luckily, my colleague Sarah on the Zoom here is our wedge expert who has all of that technical stuff available through our wedge program for folks. So thank you for clarifying that for us as well. Great. Um, I uh, would like to um, acknowledge that uh, we did want to make sure that if anybody was um, doing part of a budget meeting with council member Debbie Rose that was happening tonight to make sure we um, make sure we capture anyone uh, who might have to leave for that. So please do speak up if that's um, you're in that other group as well. Uh, and otherwise, we just have a minute left if for any final thoughts for anyone. Uh, Maggie, I'll jump in for one quick second here and maybe prompt others. Uh, the maritime sector hasn't come up uh, yet in the discussion or working waterfront. And I, I think uh, it probably <laughs> it falls into each part of this SWAT, uh, but would be curious if um, anybody wanted to highlight anything about uh, the working waterfront assets that are in this stretch, whether it falls into strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, or threats. Well, I'd, I'd like to speak to that briefly. Uh, in that stretch that we're considering, there is the Coast Guard and the uh, New York, New York Jersey pilots. And there's a whole marina in, in what you call sector two that I don't know what that is. But uh, I know that there are waterfront businesses that uh, are sometimes looking for a, a better location. So there's a, 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 an opportunity here, I would think, if we were ready to develop maritime uh, ac actual business activities. We'll dig into that section. This is Ken Huber with Langen. I would say that there are quite a few um, working waterfront properties along this segment, which is fantastic. But uh, there are some waterfront properties that are occupied by non-water dependent uses. And it would be great to see that transformed. Perhaps uh, that's an opportunity that can be explored. Those that can move upland should. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. And we have a hand up from, uh, sorry, Max Cleo, Ms. Rahi. I apologize if I uh, mispronounced your name. No, hi everyone. Thank you for inviting me. I'm hopping on 20 Zooms. Working from home is never easy. Um, I use she, they pronouns. Anything fancy also goes. Um, I think one of my, as someone who has worked in urban agriculture for a while, I helped build the sustainable farm at um, the Mariner Harbors houses in NYCHA, as well as other city developments as a longtime New Yorker and an artist and a librarian. Um, and I'm always interested in utilizing public and natural spaces for folks to use. I think being that that area is so close to snug and especially, I mean, with or without um, COVID, I'm just thinking of ways that artists could have more public spaces. Like one of the proposals that was made with the Queensway, if folks remember, it's like um, the Queens version of the High Line was creating along the routes uh, gazebos for community organizations to be able to promote educational art, um, environmental friendly programs. And I would love to see whether that or just like even like wooden um, stencils that are like holding up nature, but also artists could go and like put their work and start drawing and sketching the area. I would love to just see it as an open art space, especially being that it's so close to snug um, because so many of our spaces, whether libraries or institutions um, like Snug, they have so much land around them that is either closed off or not opened up for the public. And especially for those that are more vulnerable, who are not, who are being affected by environmental racism, is not having access to um, free resources and knowing what's in their corner. Something safe, something that is advertised, something that's for everyone. Um, because as someone who's mostly from a different borough, um, it is hard, especially in this borough, to, as an artist, to know, like, where could I set up shop to meet folks in an open space to create work um, that I'm not in some area that is um, in needs of repair or whatever. Um, and what I wrote in the chat is, I was just clarifying, because there was also um, 
I forgot his name, but um, Phil something, one of the contenders for um, Debbie Rose's district, I believe sent out a um, forum a few months ago about inquiring from residents about what they would like to see developed in um, the Stableton waterfront area. And with my colleagues at Staten Island Arts and elsewhere, a lot of artists are mentioning that there isn't enough opportunities, again, for artists and for young people to organize or to meet, um, especially now um, in such a big green borough of big safe spaces for people to organize. Um, just like on a side note, I would love to see Rikers Island being turned into a restorative justice center, you know, where folks could heal and connect and grow and land should um, not be only for a few, it should be for all, right? We live in New York City and we live in a mosaic that we feel that we are all equal and we know that not everyone has access to the same spaces. So making sure it's accessible and artistic. Yeah, I'm aware of Maker Park and installations there. I'm gonna be a featured um, sculpture artist there. Thank you, Anthony. And um, I would love to just um, connect with folks and however I could be helpful. That's my spiel. Thanks, and the, the way uh, art can serve the waterfront, I think is a great connection. We're actually gonna explore in our breakout rooms uh, as well. Um, next. So uh, I appreciate everyone's thoughts. If you have additional thoughts, we're going to keep chatting, but we're going to transition now into our um, small groups where we can really get into details and dig into some special questions uh, about the waterfront as well. All of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats um, we've been hearing about are going to help us kick off some of our next um, small group discussions. Um, so if our team is ready at Waterfront Alliance uh, to launch breakout rooms, and if you're all familiar with Zoom, it should be automatic on your end, that a little window will pop up and you just click join. We'll be in the breakout rooms for 40 minutes. I can tell you a little bit. Um, I can start talking a little bit. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to bring it on or, or where James is right now. Um, but um, we ended up we ended up working with Owen um, and um, uh, we developed a, a sketch and our what we have now is something that was done within those few minutes. And what we're gonna do is take that drawing and complete it more into a, a fuller colored illustration and we'll be able to share it with everybody. Um, a lot of Owen's focus seems to be people's access um, to the waterfront recreationally. You know, So he felt that there should be ladders, certain places, where people, if they're in an emergency or something, they can get onto you know, a more solid place on the shoreline. Um, and also um, develop roads that give you access um, to and from certain places um, along the, along the um, coastline for, uh, for recreational purposes. Um, and Without Owen or James on here, it's a little bit difficult for me to explain all of that. I'm here. Uh, oh, oh, okay. All right, all right. Owen, can you tell a little bit of what your focus was? And hopefully we should be able to get James on so he can show where his sketch is soon. But at least you can oh. explain it a lot better than I can. So it was beautiful to see uh, words turn into images. And thank you guys for doing this tonight. I think it's really uh, fabulous. Uh, of course, um, the hard edge of the North shoreline is probably less indicative of the beaches and ideal access that is ind indicated in the sketch. But if we have a hard edge, we can easily have a ladder. We can also oh, easily have a Owen, step shoreline. I apologize for interrupting you, Owen. J we can see James's screen in the gallery view now, but um, for... Uh, Perhaps if folks want to try to use the pin feature to get that up, that would be great. Uh, oh, I, I can see, I can see James's sketch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we um, then we when you can keep talking while we're seeing James's sketch. If folks zoom in on him there, as well. Thank you. Please continue. Sounds great. So we've been advocating for the last uh, twenty years of uh, opportunities to land on the north shore of Staten Island. If we're um, kayaking or canoeing from Brooklyn or lower Manhattan, the ideal uh, opportunity would be able to just uh, land at a beach, but obviously a hard edge is fine, a floating dock, 
even a stepped shoreline like what they have at the Brooklyn Bridge Park stadium seating. And what that does is not just uh, recreational boating access because that's a small, I guess, crew from uh, Staten Island. We do run a uh, kayak Staten Island for all of you to do uh, uh, recreational boating. But the other thing that the access to the water uh, gives you the opportunity for school groups to do water quality testing for school groups to uh, uh, spot the critters of our shoreline. We've actually had an amazing uh, rebirth of wildlife in New York Harbor uh, this summer um, and uh, just um, uh, great opportunities to actually uh, reconnect with the water edge and why not have those opportunities as often as possible. Last point is really uh, safety consideration. If anyone was to fall in, and didn't have a life jacket, you can basically swim about 100 feet before you get rescued by the fire department. Fire department's gonna be on land, so you need to get there and you need to get out. Baltimore Harbor has these ladders every few hundred feet. Why not have them on the North Shore of Staten Island? Uh, in addition, Lower Manhattan has throw rings. So if somebody was to fall in in Lower Manhattan, you can throw a life ring. If you're near the Staten Island Ferry, you could do that as well, but you can't do it anywhere else on the Staten Island Shore because they just aren't there. Um, and uh, those throw rings are all along the Baltimore Harbor. They should be along the shoreline of uh, Staten Island as well. There's really no excuse for it, and that's our uh, our pitch. Thank you. I, I want to add. I want to add one more thing. Um, if if someone there was a young lady that was in our in our group that we weren't able to get to because we didn't notice until the last minute that she was there or maybe she came in last and early on we didn't have enough participants but if anyone wants to contribute an idea that we can turn into a fully developed illustration i would say if it's all right if they could submit it um, to maggie and then share it and share those ideas with us in written form, and we can translate that into an illustration. And Owen's um, sketch there is going to be turned into a fully full colored illustration that will be shared with everyone. It might be important to note that we're not just kayaking. This summer we did uh, performances, we did get out the boat, um, uh, opera singing on the shoreline, we did. Uh, dance performances on a uh, floating makeshift dock above canoes and kayaks. And so all those kinds of things could happen at the North Shore and reactivate the water's edge. Um, but you need to be able to get on and off the water. Amazing. Thank you. Now, just, can anybody, can everybody hear me? Yes. What we have here is we have, we have access, access coming down from a road down to a hard surface leading into the, into the kayaks here and the different ladders um, being set here. Uh, this was an idea for a possible of a mini amphitheater um, right down there for performances, but we could also just extend this, this uh, step up that we have for the kayaks and just take it around the edge, edge it in this way. So we have a staggered, it staggers around. Um, these buildings here are for um, when you first come in, for uh, rules and regulations and also getting yourself set up, but also the possibility of having uh, a mini uh, coffee bar uh, set up for, for people to have access and restrooms up here. This is the parking lot down here. And then we have an area over here, uh, a green area uh, along the shoreline uh, where people could play bocce ball, possibly with a, a deck along, along with it so they can just sit and watch the waterfront down here. And then, uh, kids and stuff down here gathered, gathered down uh, doing water testing and things like that with, with, a, with a class. Um, so we were kind of bouncing around with, with a, multiple different ideas, but that's basically what, what we were looking at. And this is a rock, this is a rock, a rock, like a rock climbing area over on this side. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Wow, really amazing to see. Um, I think we all have to move on to um, our next group now. If group one wants to go or Jake's group, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was saying before, uh, I didn't get a chance to assign anyone to it. So I, I don't mind for my group just kind of reporting what we, what we were discussing. Um, so for the first takeaway, kind of like looking at the map here, um, 
we think that around like the front street open waterfront and around parks, it should be just more park space, more green space that incorporates kind of green design to kind of hit like both ends of, you know, making an area be able to like adapt to flooding more, but also have an area where people can recreate and just relax. Um, in terms of looking more on the map, um, looking at like commercial areas, working waterfronts, post-industrial areas, we kind of thought it might be a good idea to make it more adaptable for more age ranges. Um, the people in my group kind of saw it more as an area where a lot of older people go to fish, but they would also love to see families go there. They would love to see kids recreating there. Um, so that would be that would be really great for that. And then in terms of transportation around the Northeast shore of Staten Island, um, it seems to be a pretty broad consensus, pretty accepted consensus that maybe a shuttle bus might be a good idea. Um, tra car traffic makes it very congested and very difficult to get to the ferry, especially for those who commute from Staten Island over to Manhattan to work in a place like downtown. Uh, so better transportation in the form of maybe a light rail or a shuttle bus would be really helpful. And those are the main takeaways that we have. Thank you, Jake. Um, all right, so room two or whoever would like to go next. I, I, hi, I think we were room two, although I, I forgot the number at the outset, but we'll, we'll go for it. Um, we had a really great engaged group. And again, I can't thank everyone enough for, for your great comments uh, this evening. Um, just touching on the first question, which had to do uh, more with uh, climate resilience and flood risk. There are a couple of themes um, that emerged uh, around education, uh, really, um, you know, teach children so they can tell their parents being, a, being an important theme, um, but also education at a, at a broader level, uh, not just uh, youth based, but um, community based and among uh, decision makers after, you know, Hurricane Irene and Hurricane Sandy and everything that Staten Island's uh, really been through there's still sort of a lack of education around environmental justice issues, uh, climate change issues, and really needing uh, more organizations, more advocates, uh, more of a platform to educate uh, people, uh, keeping these issues front and center. Um, the natural shoreline was mentioned a lot, um, everything from oysters to berms and to uh, you know, really proven ecological measures um, planning for the 500 year uh, floodplain. Um, and, and again, um, making sure that uh, the public, the decision makers are aware that these nature-based solutions are effective um, and, and should be deployed more often. Um, and the other thing that came up on this first question that was important was focused around planning and how um, decisions are made uh, as to what's built at the water's edge and how it's built. Um, and really the, the, the process by which the city goes through planning and coming up with these ideas is, is fragmented. There's a call for comprehensive planning and the need to consider factors like gentrification and access and continuity and transportation and the fact that you have patches of public and private and public and private um, and that really needs more of a, a comprehensive approach. Um, and then on the second question around the map specifically, a lot of really great ideas about, um, you know, forming a cultural corridor, um, having uh, programming be a, a key part of getting people excited and uh, about what they can do and see in this corridor. A big part of that was um, history um, and, and the historic perspective around um, people who've lived in this corridor, around African-American history, around having markers that tell stories um, being, being an important piece. Um, There's also discussion around um, connectivity between some of those different pieces, greenway connectivity, connecting some of the parks better, like getting Fort Wadsworth and Von Briesen better connected to each other. Um, there was some discussion around uh, using the, the huge site that is Fort Wadsworth for maritime education, uh, creating more feeders to, to maritime careers. Um, and finally, uh, comments around fishing and kayaking and boating, resounding yes, uh, and, and uh, a fast ferry to Brooklyn. Um, and I'll stop there. 
Great. Um, Maggie or Sarah's group, would you like to go next? Well, I'm Claude and I was chosen to represent group five, maybe just because I have a big mouth. Um, well, uh, there was discussion again about the development issue and uh, could uh, the infrastructure support it. Uh, I brought up the fact that uh, there are only two sewage treatment plants on the island. And uh, right now, uh, during any kind of storms, um, sewage treatment ends and uh, the flood water enters and everything enters the bay. So with uh, more housing, uh, and unfortunately it's going to be uh, almost like a done deal unless we all get together and fight it. Uh, um, well, let's see what happens. Uh, there was uh, five questions that Margaret uh, posed to us. Unfortunately, I don't remember all of them. Uh, however, uh, there was a very large discussions and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes diametrically opposed. <laughs> I think, Claudia, can you just say one, one or two words about our discussion that was on the, di the diametric? Yeah. Oh, on... Uh, the, the opposite ends. All right. Um, well, there were people who felt that education was a means to enlighten the populace in uh, resiliency. And uh, if they knew more about climate uh, change, uh, they would be more supportive of uh, things that have to be done uh, in order to uh, save the shoreline. Uh, then there was uh, uh, two different uh, ideas when it came to how to sustain or how to build resiliency uh, naturally versus um, to implement uh, certain codes uh, that would uh, change what is in place now so that uh, you can uh, make sure that flooding is uh, at a minimum. Uh, naturally, of course, is to develop uh, those types of areas that would include or increase wetlands. And uh, it was alluded to the West Shore and Staten Island where there are many wetlands. Unfortunately, Amazon has been built and that has decreased. Uh, and of course, the other was uh, when it came to building codes, uh, maybe making sure that homes uh, are built on like what they do along the Delmarva Peninsula, built on stilts. <laughs> but, uh, you know, these were some of the points that were made. And I apologize to my group, but I don't remember names. I'm very poor. And if I didn't have a Delaney book, I wouldn't really have remembered my students' names. So I apologize. But uh, it was a very stimulating conversation we had. I'm sure Margaret would agree. <laughs> Thank you I, so much, Claudia. I cover everything that uh, was needed. Okay, Margaret? Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, we only have a few minutes left. So, um, Sarah, if your group would like to go next. Yeah, thank you. Um, I did not assign anyone. Does anybody from my group want to report out? Feel free to speak up if so, otherwise I can do it. Um, all right. So um, we talked a lot about things that we liked um, on the North Shore and one that came up um, a lot was access, particularly to kayaking. Um, and another thing was just the, the proximity and um, how you can bike around and get to a lot of different places, which is really nice. And the connectivity for bikers is, um, I hear it's better in North Shore compared to the South Shore, but there's also a lot of steep slopes and um, sharp edges and things that make it less safe. So there was um, some desire to see uh, um, um, 
more separate, uh, better bike lanes instead of just the painted on ones. Um, and then one thing that we talked about just in terms of the type of development, I think this is a, a theme throughout the meeting, but um, investment in small businesses. Um, and I think especially in terms of resiliency, um, the, the existing local businesses that are there having making sure that they're retrofitted um, is a priority. Um, another thing I thought was interesting is just that we talked a lot about um, just what the, the types of things that people have been doing since the pandemic and the desire to see more low cost um, affordable programming opportunities. So we talked about um, partnering with Billion Oyster Project, um, also um, doing uh, having more like walks and, and kayaking opportunities for people. Um, but I think that there's sort of a communications issue in getting the word out because it seems like not a lot of people know that there's already good things going on. Um, and uh, there's also we talk about food scarcity. Um, there's a Western beef that's apparently on the waterfront, which is not a water dependent use, but one of the um, biggest and most affordable grocery stores there. Um, and lastly, we, we talked a lot about horseshoe crabs. <laughs> Um, and there aren't a lot of existing uh, horseshoe crab sandy beaches, but there might still be opportunities to preserve pockets of, um, of uh, habitat um, and even try to restore. There's most of the shoreline is riprap and um, man-made beach, but there might be an opportunity to restore some more natural shorelines in certain places. Great, thank you so much, Sarah. I'll go really, really fast for my group. Um, we did cover a lot of ground, but we only were kind of over time. So um, we talked about how um, nature-based resiliency measures are really good, but there's definitely the necessity for more research um, to be done into how these work in certain places. And there's kind of a lack in that and a, a lot of potential in that in the same way, um, along with into the, the maintenance of, um, nature-based resilience measures. Um, and uh, from there, the conversation kind of segued into um, how this can be incorporated into education through showing models and spaces of how, um, how maybe a shoreline could look before and after um, resilience is implemented. And uh, Billy and Oyster was also mentioned during our conversation as they have a demo that um, is some, definitely something to look to. Um, um, Access was definitely mentioned a lot in terms of transit. I think a trolley was mentioned for getting down the stretch because it's not the most walkable in certain parts. Um, and then um, incorporating living habitat into places where people can access to really maximize that space that is so, um, so crucial in the city as well. And I'll just uh, leave it there. Um, and maybe Maggie can share screen on the concluding words. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, and also, yeah, for everyone who is still here, I'm gonna release a poll that you should see coming up on your screen regarding how our report can be most useful to Staten Islanders. So hopefully you see that come up. Um, but yes, thank you so much for all of your input, um, which will be considered as the study moves forward. And um, as we talked about at the beginning, the completed study will form into a maritime activation, resiliency, and public access vision instead of strategies for this waterfront stretch. Um, and as a downloadable report, it will be available for use by Staten Islanders and as a tool to be shared with organizations, local government, or anywhere it could be helpful and impactful. And this report is expected to be released sometime this June. Um, and if you would like to provide any additional ideas or commentary, I know there's only so much time during this meeting, you can do so by taking our online survey or by contacting myself or Maggie Flanagan directly. Uh, the survey link and our emails will be posted in the chat. And then of course, to stay updated on Waterfront Alliance events, you can refer to our website and social media. Um, so thank you again, everyone, and I hope you all have a great weekend. Bye. Oh, we're going to release the poll, right? Is it released? Yes, I'm going to close uh, the poll now so you can all uh, see the results. I have a quick question. Um, I see this is being recorded and I missed the beginning of the meeting. Is there any way that the attendees can um, 
get access to this recording. Yeah, right, Maggie, that would be okay, right? To share the recording or? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. If it's okay. If not, I'm just okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not the one who handles legal contractual oh. matters at our organization. So if there's something about that, I don't know, but no, certainly, yeah. <laughs> we're good. Actually, go. anyone who email registered for this will, will just get a link uh, in the next day or two. Um, thank and, you. and this will be publicly available. So thank you Great. for asking. I want to make a brief point. Um, New York is, hasn't shown a lot of uh, creativity um, in the waterfront um, areas and sometimes if um, if you want to see something that can be done go over the Bayonne Bridge you can walk over the bridge you can bicycle over the Bayonne Bridge and as soon as you get over the bridge make a right turn and a right turn and there's a waterfront park that's old industrial spaces that have been revisioned into um, into a park. They have uh, waterproof exercise. There's um, ellipticals and, um, and, and uh, workout spaces. There's uh, dog runs. There's a playground with a giant pirate ship. It's easy to get to. It certainly it's free. And it can give you some great ideas about what can be done with uh, re-envisioning the waterfront. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, as everyone said, we're, we're available for um, further commentary whenever anyone would like, um, but this is the concluded, conclusion of our meeting tonight. So uh, thank you very all much for your time and your thoughts. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you.